going on YouTube? Today I got this 2005 Toyota Camry with a four cylinder. I'm going to be replacing the alternator today. I'm going to show you all how to do it. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so I can continue to make videos like this to make your life easier. And the reason why we're replacing this today is because it is not charging anymore. And a good indication of when your alternator goes bad is your battery light will come on while you're driving. The car might start, the car might run and drive, but when the battery light's on, that means the car is running off your battery. And if you have a good strong battery, you can usually get about 10, maybe 20 miles to your destination before the car is going to shut off. Just make sure if that ever happens to you, turn off all loads. Hopefully it happens in the daytime we don't have to have your headlights on. Turn off your stereo, your AC, everything that's drawing a load. The less you have on, the further you can get. So I'm going to show you how to do this today. Let's do it. I already got the part. Customer's waiting, so let's get this done. First thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this negative battery terminal. This one's been changed before. And of course it's going to be a different size. So I'm going to disconnect the positive. Leave that negative alone. Take that off this quick fall. My little ring on the end of that is getting worn out, so the sockets like to fall off. And don't, don't want to lose the sockets, especially a swivel socket. They ain't cheap. Now we're going to get this belt out of our way. Down here on the tensioner, you're going to have, I don't know if you can see that or not. On the tensioner, you got the built on bolt head, bolt head to 19 millimeter. You can use a long ratchet and a 19 millimeter socket, but I got a special tensioner tool for this. It makes it a lot easier because that's a tight, very tight tensioner. Going the wrong way. We're going to be going downwards counterclockwise. Sorry, I'm sorry, clockwise. You're going down, my bad. Pull down slowly. I'm going to take it off the water pump. Now, try your best not to lose your belt routing. Just gonna kind of tuck that out of the way. There were a reason this belt, because there's nothing wrong with the belt. So, if you are gonna change the belt, make sure you take a pen and a piece of paper and draw your own little diagram. Because these do not come with a diagram on them. Some cars come with a sticker. Most of the imports don't. And I'm just gonna leave that tension to cool there, resting. Pull back this rubber boot, unplug your alternator. Pull down this little tab right here. A little bracket right there. This alternator comes with a new one, it looks like. I think. No, it doesn't. So it comes with the other bracket. So we'll be taking that off and transferring over to the new alternator when I get it off. Now let's grab your tin. Take your battery wire off. And it'll give you a new nut, so you don't have to reuse that. I usually save those because that's a both that's a good nut. You could use that on a lot of different things. But I'll unplug the sensor right here too, crank sensor. Get this other wire off the alternator. So, a pair of pliers here. Try not to break that tab. If you do, just use a zip tie. I'll unplug my compressor too. Just pushing on that tab. 
pull up on it. Now we can get that wire completely out of our way. It's not hindering us. All right, now in the very bottom bowl on the alternator, it's a 12 millimeter. The top one's a 14. Kind of a tight spot, you just gotta kind of feel for it. It'll give you a lot of room here for the ratchet. Oh. Break that bad boy loose. I'm gonna take it the rest of the way out with my fingers. Got enough room to get my hand, my big fat hand down there. Now we're going to get this 14 off. I'm going to take this out of the overflow bottle too. Clean that out of my way. Oh, that bad boy's tight. I probably should have loosened that before I took the bottom bolt completely out. Oh no. No, no, no. It's never a good time to drop sockets, especially as one I'm using. So I guess I'll be searching for that bad boy. Yeah, after the video. I'll just have to get another 12. It is what it is. Me and my clumsy hands. Of course, it wouldn't hit the floor. Wouldn't be that lucky. Kind of wiggle it back and forth. Pull your alternator off. Remember that bracket. you hold on to your alternator because it's going to be a core on it some of your money back you can put this on if you want to after you mount yeah good old rookies new hires He knows I'm recording. He said sorry. That's funny. I'm going to drop your alternator down on there. Now, if you get your alternator in this little tab right here, because this thing has a pinch tab. Let me show you on this old one. This right here, as you tighten the bolt, it pulls this through to tighten the alternator. If that thing's not back far enough, sometimes you'll get an alternator and you're having a hard time getting it over that bracket there. Before you put your alternator on, just stick your bolt down this hole, stick it down in the hole, thread it a couple turns, and take a hammer and just hit the head of the bolt. It should push that back enough to be able to get your alternator on. Run that down some. Just where it's touching. I don't want to hinder myself. I'm trying to get that bottom bolt started. Tighten it too tight. I'm not going to be able to wiggle it around. I'm going to put this bolt all the way down until it's touching by hand. And tighten it with another 12. Luckily, I got my ratchet up there already. quarter inch one but I'll look for that after the video. Hopefully I don't forget. Alright, I'm going to take my manual ratchet wrench here. 
couple more snugs. I'm not gonna be able to do that on the bottom boat because it's too far back, so. Snug that bottom one down. Put my belt back on real quick. Making sure it doesn't fall off anything. Oh, wrong way, dummy. Yeah, it came off the power steering down there. Fish that back on here. Yeah, just lift a little bit. Come on, get on there. Almost. It's still hanging off a little bit. Let me take this pry bar down there. Get that. Get on there, fool. There we go. All right. Make sure we're on everything because they don't give you a lot of slack on this belt. And this is the old belt. The old belt seems to stretch a little bit. See, we're off on the AC down there a little bit. So I'm going to do it, I'm taking it off the water pump. And the reason why I'm doing that is because on these pulleys, you have like a bridge on the end. And that's going to take up space when you're trying to get the belt seated. So, because the pulley on the water pump, it's slick on the end. There's no bridge there hindering you from getting the belt back on. See what I'm saying? I just slid it on, and that's a hydraulic tensioner, meaning it's oil filled, and they're tight, y'all. So, go ahead and get our plugs plugged back in here. Put your little wire back in. Now, if you break this tab pulling it out, just get a zip tie and run a little hole in that bracket. Just keep that from rubbing the belt. Alright. Make sure we tighten that. Don't want to forget to tighten that. belt's not hanging off anywhere because if it's the lip is hanging or the belt's hanging on that lip it's gonna shred it every time all right it's good to me Just keep that handy sorry about the big mess it's been a crazy week man I've been pretty much by myself all week long we usually run three texts and it's just been me and I am wore out. Luckily, I'm off the next couple days after the day. Get some rest. Make sure the terminals are tight. Get all your 
tools out of the way. This should fire right up because the battery is still holding pretty strong. When the customer dropped it off, so I shouldn't have to jump it off. These nasty gloves are also going to be grease all over this channel. Of course, my sweaty hands ain't much nicer, but they ain't greasy. Okay, let's fire this bad boy up, make sure that battery indicator light goes off and showing that it's charging. If there's anything below, anything below 13, when you start hitting the 12.6, below 12.6, it's just battery power and it will pick that light on indicating it's a problem with the charging system. So this light should immediately go off when I crank the car. And it did. The battery light's right there. It's normal for it to be on with the key on, engine off, but if that light's on when the car's running, your alternator's not charging. But always make sure that battery wire that I unhooked with the 10 millimeter bolt, always make sure that you got a, a battery signal there. Just probe with the multimeter. You should have at least 12 volts at that battery wire. Now, if you don't have 12 volts at that battery wire on the alternator, Something's wrong with the fuse. I've already done all that. This is such a common problem on these Toyotas for these alternators to go bad. Sometimes I'll be noisy too. This one wasn't noisy, it just quit charging, but they'll start making a humming sound. They're on their way out. So, anyways, enough uh, y'all's time. I gotta put this car in the air. It sucks because I didn't have to rack it to do this alternator, but now I'm gonna have to rack it to find my socket because I'm not letting my socket go. snap on socket. So, anyways, I hope y'all like this video. I hope y'all found it informative. I'm ready to start my weekend and get some sleep. Y'all have a good day. Subscribe, check, like. Peace out, y'all.